Welcome back to part two. I don't have a lot to say. Let's just jump in. Remember, we're picking up Harry just came back from his round trip, 24 hour trip to the UK where he asked his father if he could step in and help part time and was told no. And it was right after he left, by the way, that he gave an interview where he said, well, I might be able to reconcile with my family with all the illnesses going on. You know, that's the sort of thing that brings family together. Um, hasn't brought Megan and her father together, a man who's had, um, you know, two heart attacks and a stroke. What Harry doesn't see is that every time he attacks the monarchy, he's directly attacking Charles, Camilla, William, Catherine, and the children. And let's not forget what William said after Harry gave that interview. You know, to Tom Bradby, he said, and I'm quoting, I have put my arm around my brother all of our lives. I can't do it anymore. We are separate entities. So after the spare, Harry was like, wait a minute, they're not talking to me. G, go figure. And he went and had another interview with Tom Bradby, you know, the one where he denied that he called the family racist. But this is what he said. Listen to this. Family, not an institution. They feel as though it's better to keep us somehow as the villains. They've shown absolutely no willingness to reconcile. I would like to get my father back. I would like to have my brother back. Then before Spare, he gave an interview to Michael Strahan and he said, and I'm quoting, ultimately, I don't ever think we can have peace with my family unless the truth is out there. Michael Strahan then says, well, you discuss William as your beloved brother and your arch nemesis. Then Michael Strahan goes, so the heir was jealous of the Spare. He also brought up Diana. What would she think? And he goes, I think she would be sad. She'd be looking at it long term, that there are certain things that we need to go through to heal our relationship. And he also said, quote, I felt the presence of my mom more so in the last two years than I have in the last 30. So he slammed his family and brought up Princess Diana. Then we have Harry's interview with Hoda, where he again talked about his family. And this is where Harry made the statement about the queen making sure she was protected and had the right people around her. Because the people around her were William, Catherine, Charles, Edward, and you get the point. And it was also at this time that he said home for him was in the United States. And we know that he has changed his permanent residency from the day he was evicted from Frogmore to the United States. And let's not forget, after Oprah, we had the me you can't see, where he said horrible things about his family. But here's one bit of what he said. Listen to this. I thought my family would help. But every single ask, request, warning, whatever it is, just got met with total silence or total neglect. Of course, he brought up Diana. I have a lot of my mum in me. But just to show you how delusional this man is, after slamming his family on Oprah and the me you can't see, this is what he actually had to say. I like to think that we were able to speak truth in the most compassionate way possible, therefore leaving an opening for reconciliation and healing. You think he would stop, but no. Next up, Harry gave an ITV interview about the phone hacking where he said we should be doing this lawsuit as a family and he has his family's lack of support on the issue is the central piece to their rift. He said, I believe, again, from a service standpoint, when you're in a public role, these are the things we should be doing it for the greater good. Then he brought up his mother again and suggested there was evidence she was hacked in the 90s, probably one of the first people to be hacked. The thing is, she didn't have a cell phone. I'm bringing that up because one, he played the Diana card again. Number two, Harry has never been able to prove Diana was hacked. We all know the one landline hacking, but that's it. How about Harry's 60 minute interview with Anderson Cooper, where it was brought up the things that he said about William, you know, where he doesn't look like Diana anymore or how he was going bald. And Harry actually said, I didn't write anything intended to hurt anybody. Uh huh. He said he didn't realize until he met Megan how bigoted his family was. 
And it was during this interview when he admitted he was not speaking to William or Charles. And he said, you know, I hope to fix things. The ball is in their court. Megan and I have continued to say we will openly apologize for anything we did wrong. But every time we ask that question, no one's telling us specifics or anything. Really? You're giving these interviews one after another and you can't figure out why the family's not talking to you. Let's not forget, I have to bring it up, the Oprah interview where Harry said he'd been financially cut off from his dad, but of course we found out later on his father had given him millions. As a matter of fact, I've done multiple inter um, videos, you guys know that, you can go in and type in Oprah debunk into my channel and you'll get more information than you could possibly ever want to watch. Now Harry was not the only one who was giving interviews and causing problems. It was in the cut interview where Megan said, about the Royal Rhoda, why would I give the very people that are calling my children the N-word a photo of my child before I can share it with people I love? Hello, nobody ever called her children the N-word that's never been proven and she's, of course, never has receipts. And it was during this magazine interview where she said, and I'm quoting, I never had to sign anything that restricts me from talking. I can talk about my whole experience and make a choice not to. She says, I'm still trying to make an active effort to forgive Harry's family. Mm-hmm. Next up, she did the Variety interview where she did say some nice things about the Queen, but then she said, well, I can't make any comments about the Queen or her in-laws. It'll be a distraction. Be a distraction? You had just given an interview before that saying horrible things about the family. Then, of course, we have the six-part Netflix docu-series where basically they said that the entire family had unconscious bias. Then, of course, Harry bro brought up his mother again. I had to do everything I could to protect my family, especially after what happened to my mom. He tried to push the narrative of how Megan was so similar to Diana, and Diana would never have mock curtsied the queen. Could you imagine if the queen had lived long enough to see this mess on Netflix? So with all of this and all the attacks on the family and the interviews and the constant whining, Harry sounds like a freaking broken record. The truth of the matter is, whether you choose to believe it or not, Harry has been trying to get William's attention and it hasn't worked. William is completely ignoring him. And if he wanted to attack the family, okay, I don't think that's okay. But William was never going to accept the attacks on Catherine. Now, I'm sure if I dug in, I could probably find more interviews, more stuff, but I think I've made my point. The point is, Harry has attacked the family relentlessly with his wife for the last four years, but Harry is willing to come back and work part-time, but only if the family apologizes to him. This is where I keep telling you guys he's absolutely delusional. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for all notifications. Put those comments down, make them good. Then go down into the description box where you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon, which is currently paused while I'm still working with YouTube to fix this mess, uh, my physical address, my Amazon wish list. If you've donated anything to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day. Oh,